stuff is I, it's the philosophy of the clothing that you're making as opposed to the function of it. They don't look like sweaters, you know, they, they look like... No, they're not cardigans, yeah. They're not cardigans, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's kind of more spontaneous, gives it an extra energy to it than if it's all totally pre-thought about. Do you have special Craig Lawrence machines that you use? Or, These ones. <laughs> or you use your hands, so everything's like These couture machines. made. Yeah. We heavily art direct everything that I do. Really? Yeah, because it's meant to be performance art about fame. I really kind of work from a place of intuition about where things are going. Yeah, exactly. Like, pop culture has always come from somewhere. It doesn't just appear. <laughs> right, and the artists and designers, we have the power to change what yeah. it means. I think I might be dramatic on the inside. Yes. <laughs> it's you've got to find some inspiration from somewhere. Generally, it's where I live, and I'm kind of drawn to all of anything that's shiny and tacky and flashy. I'm this just is like... nice that we share that. <laughs> <laughs> I choose to live a lifestyle that resides in the sentiments of the late 70s and the 80s. So my inspirations and the way that I live my life, it mirrors that energy. Dance and movement, that's my strongest element. Music videos as well, I get really involved with them. It's kind of good to watch, because it's always like, oh wow, that'd be good if... We did that with the garment. <laughs> And I see it in your work, too, that you're fascinated with performance artists. Mm. I, I, too, I love Lee Bowery. Yeah. I love Klaus Nomi. Yeah, That's where a lot of my... A lot of people say... Um, and I do love Margiela. I'm a huge mm. kind of Margiela head. But my original inspiration and what drew me towards Margiela was, was Klaus Nomi yeah. and, and the, what he wore on stage. There's a great performance artist... Andre Bartenev. Yes. It's a Russian guy. All of his stuff like is like party. crazy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's a really strong element. Rave with culture. Things as I love well. that. And the robots and yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's like just creating different creatures, I guess. So you look at your you look at your garments as In as individual creatures. Yeah. Because what I really love about your stuff is that it's it's knitwear, but I but I see that. The, the knitwear element is, um, it's the philosophy of the clothing mm -hmm. that you're making as opposed to um, the function of it. Uh, yeah. For us, what we do is not fantasy. I don't know. No. I can't speak for you, but for myself, my, my stage performance is not a fantasy. It feels kind of normal. It's who it's we just, are. Yeah. It's, um... Everybody else is just a bit slow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think others... I think In a, a good way. I, but I agree with you. As often I say, well, that's just boring. Yeah. Or it, it's... The idea hasn't it's been not fully doing anything. flushed. It's yeah. not going anywhere. But people say uh, Lady Gaga kooky aesthetic or avant-garde. Or, you know, we're not this way for the sake of being kooky. You don't start off thinking that. No, it's we... Because it would come up with... You would come up with something completely... Completely different. Crap. <laughs> when we're done, we go, oh, it's beautiful, it's the future, it's, it's, it's amazing. When I write a song, I just wrote a song for my re-release. My re-release mm -hmm. is called The Fame Monster. Ooh. So the whole idea is that I believe in fashion and in... It's interesting that you said creatures, because mm -hmm. I believe in fashion and in music and in art, that everything's kind of going in this dark direction. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote this re-release, and it's called The Fame Monster. I wrote a song called Monster. And I, I guess, um, you know, the, the idea of life after the fame happens is, is, is a monstrous life, a life of horror. And, and, and building that idea of 1950s monster movies, I, you know, for some people, they think it's like a bit wacky, but for the house, <laughs> we think it's beautiful. So I just, I, I just relate to that, that question with you, I think, because when I see your work, I know that for you, you're not trying to create a fantasy. Mm -hmm. It's for you. It is, it is your zero. Yeah.
It's your, your place of... People will be wearing it one day. I, I would wear your clothes every day. Cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd wear it, like, anywhere. <laughs> get asked sometimes they say so for you life is it's just a party right Lady Gaga and I say well no you know five percent five percent exactly and I and I I do there is a soul behind my, my work beyond party life but it's an interesting question in the context of modern culture because in the 70s and in the 80s, partying was not a bad thing. It was art. <laughs> it was everybody that was partying wasn't a lazy schmuck. They were mm. the most brilliant artists in the world. Yves Saint Laurent was sitting next to Andy Warhol, and Grace Jones was late, but she was on the way. And you were you were in the context of people that were brilliant. So, I guess um, for my, myself, as a, I surround myself with talented, brilliant people mm -hmm. to infuse my own work and I empower them. Yeah, that helps so much. So uh, that's how I would say that I, I, I bring that, the philosophies of the past into my own life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like with the Warhol factory and yeah. pieces like that. I it's mean, like everyone that I work with is, is quite young and we, we make films and we make clothes and and all most of the time... Uh, all of the production people that are surrounding me want to kill me because I I follow no rules and I am I'm constantly changing things and you know it's funny that guitar I played at Glastonbury we made the day before you know and it suddenly changed something like that yeah. changes the dynamic yeah, of a whole yeah. show so we had to change lots of things but that's that's how I work it's worth it it is worth it I think. Some of these outfits take nearly a week for me to knit, you know, by myself, some of them. So for me to sit and knit something, it has to be super amazing. Yeah, even that or is else such I'll a great... Or else I'll just get bored yes, and, and not do it. Memorable. Yeah. Memorable. I always use that word. Sometimes I'm just like, <laughs> it's not memorable. We can't do it because it's not memorable. And if we do it, nobody will remember this moment, so it's not worth having. Yeah. That's a good... Yeah. I might start saying that now. You should, I swear. <laughs> I guess, you know, and for me, some of it's also, I had a lot of gay friends growing up and went to a lot of gay clubs, and just dance in the gay community is just like this, it's this mm. subculture of celebration and, and joy and fun. And um, I draw lots of my inspiration from the gay community in an almost subconscious way. It's like so deeply ingrained in me now that I think that's the only release sometimes. Yeah. So I think that's why it's so pumping, because they're all just like... It's so joyful. Yeah. I sometimes yeah. I say, as long as it's gay, make sure it's gay. <laughs> <laughs> like, for the video, or for the mix on something, or for the clothing, I always say, as long as it's gay, it's good. And I say, okay. <laughs> sort of, I guess that's like the checking off point. Yeah. <laughs>